In this episode, we're exploring a vibrant, up-and-coming neighborhood in St. Petersburg, Florida. We'll show you some of the reasons why you need to visit the Grand Central District. Located only two miles away, the Grand Central District is very easily accessed from downtown St. Pete by simply heading straight west on Central Avenue. While one can definitely walk from downtown St. Pete to the Grand Central District, on this hot April day, we decided to ride scooters. Scooters can be rented at one of several kiosks located on and around Central Avenue, along with both traditional and hybrid electric bicycles. Like downtown St. Pete, the Grand Central District is full of art and murals and lined with locally owned businesses such as our first stop of the day, Bandit Coffee. Opened in February of 2016, Bandit has been serving up single origin, locally roasted coffee in the Grand Central District for over five years. And on a typical Saturday morning, would be packed with customers. On the day of our visit, Bandit's inside area remained closed to customers while they complete construction of their new full kitchen. But we were more than happy to relax in one of the many shaded areas while we waited for our order. our coffee at Bandit and as usual our favorite was the vanilla bean latte. They make a house-made syrup from Madagascar vanilla beans. We also got a cortado and while that drink was good I honestly don't know why we ever get anything other than that vanilla bean latte because it really is that good. Um, it's definitely a little more pricey but worth the occasional splurge. Now that we have our caffeine we're gonna take off for the next spot. We're not even exactly sure where that is but we're heading that way. We'll see you there. Our next stop took us to the corner of Central and 24th Street, which is the location of what used to be known as Old Key West. We were surprised to find that the name had recently changed to Mixers. found the Bloody Mary bar to be full of delicious options including olives, peppers, pickles, mushrooms, and several choices of hot sauce. I was happy to find that they also offered an amazing mimosa bar with several juice options along with an assortment of fruit purees and fresh fruit. We enjoyed building our own drinks and found both to be every bit as delicious as they looked. We just got done here at Mixers and had a delicious Bloody Mary and Mimosa. And to be honest, we were kind of considering staying to take advantage of their endless options. Yeah, for only 20 bucks for Bloody Marys and 15 bucks for Mimosas, you can get all you can drink for several hours. But for the sake of the rest of this video, we decided to cut ourselves off at one. And for you locals who love Old Key West, don't worry. It's called Mixers now, but it's still under the same ownership and you can still get all of the specials that Old Key West used to offer. Our next destination was less than a block down Central Avenue to one of our go-to food spots, the Floribian. Opened in January of 2020, the Floribian offers Caribbean fusion cuisine with a blend of Floridian and Caribbean cooking techniques featuring fresh and locally sourced ingredients. The Floribian specializes in its signature and build your own bowls, which we generally find to be more than enough for one meal. During this visit, we decided to try something new and opted to share the Tyrican bowl in a fresh coconut water. We were also able to sample some fresh juices, which included acai, mango grapefruit, and coconut lime ginger. As usual, the meal at Floribian was delicious. While walking out the door, we came across the first of several pedal pubs that we would see throughout the day, which we took as a sign that it was time to grab some beers. And when we arrived at our next stop, we took this awesome sloth mural as confirmation that we had made the right decision. 
After yet another awesome meal at the Floribian, we are here at Hawthorne Bottle Shop. And from what I know about this place, they offer a ton of bottles of beers and also some rather hard to find taps. So I'm really looking forward to checking this place out. We'll see you in there. Upon entering Hawthorne Bottle Shop, we were impressed with the huge selection of bottled beer and wine that could be purchased either to drink on the premises or taken to go. We resisted the temptation to make questionable decisions and did not go home with Big Deborah. But we did enjoy a few beers from their tap list, which included a variety of craft beers from around Florida and the U.S. Does it taste like, what do they say, walnut fudge? <laughs> Some sort of fudge, yes. Alright, now Skylar is trying the sweet stout. It's really sweet. Too sweet for him. <laughs> it literally tastes like drinking brownie. I love it. <laughs> That's sour. Good or not? I mean, if you like sours, it would be good. <laughs> so, no, I'll probably like it. Yeah, you'll like it. All right. After confirming that we both still have very different tastes in beers, we were ready to check out a newer addition to the Grand Central District, the Hatchet Hangout. After reading the safety rules, we decided it probably wasn't the best day to throw a hatchet for the first time, as the beers at Hawthorne were pretty heavy. We did still enjoy checking the place out and watching the other patrons throw the hatchets. We were impressed with the selection of beers on tap, which included both some great local craft beers and a self-pour system for a variety of other beers. And while we threw no hatchets during this visit, we both agreed that the Hatchet Hangout would be a great place to return someday with a group of friends. After leaving the Hatchet Hangout, I was craving something sweet, which led us just another block down Central Avenue to Valhalla Bakery. We quickly found an abundance of options to satisfy my sweet tooth. After much debate, I chose the cookie butter blondie and Skylar chose a mushroom and onion pastry called Poofy Boy. Seems to be a look of approval. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. That's really good. Is it? Yeah. Better than Poofy Boy? <laughs> I like Poofy Boy, but that does look pretty damn good. We just got done with our afternoon snack at the bakery, and that cookie butter blondie was amazing. I will go back to that bakery just to have that again. But now we're on our way to our next spot, which is the dog bar. Now, we've never actually been here before because we don't have a dog, but today we're going to go anyways. Upon entering the dog bar, Skyler was delighted to find that he was becoming a local celebrity, so much so that they have a portrait of him on the wall. After exploring inside, it was time to enjoy a couple cold drinks and check out the dog party outside. We were happy to find that there was no shortage of dog entertainment. And we were not surprised to see this ice pool to be a popular spot on this hot Florida day. We just left the dog bar and we can confirm that you don't need a dog to have a good time. 
And now we're heading right next door to Grand Central Brew House. And we have been here before in our What's New St. Pete video, but we're coming back today because they now have a Doppelbach, which is my favorite type of beer and also really hard to find at breweries around here. So even though I probably don't need another beer right now, we're going anyway, so we'll see you there. But first, for those of you cat enthusiasts out there, we also have a great animal experience for you just a few blocks away. Sunshine Kitty Cafe opened in June of 2020 and offers customers a lounge experience and co-working setting where you can work, relax, and enjoy tasty drinks in the company of several cats. Additionally, each of the cats at St. Pete's first cat cafe are adoptable and have been acquired from the cafe's rescue partner, Friends of Strays. It doesn't take long to notice that the resident cats live a pretty good life at the cafe, with each having several options for entertainment and relaxation. After spending some time playing with McGregor and Fiona in the main lounge area, we discovered this relaxing kitty zen room, which to our surprise had no cats in it during our visit. But after all, who needs a fancy kitty zen room when you can lounge in the sun in a cardboard box? After a little more playtime with the cats, our session had come to an end. And like this guy, we were about ready for a nap. But first, we still have a brewery to take you to. When we got to Grand Central, Skylar was happy to find the elusive Doppelbach he was waiting for, along with a couple of other German-style beers that we couldn't pass up. And probably the highlight of the whole day was meeting Mike and Julie, a couple visiting from Nebraska. We learned that they were familiar with our channel from our beach and brewery tour videos and actually run their own brewery in Nebraska, which we hope to visit someday. So if any of you beer lovers happen to be driving through central Nebraska, be sure to stop by Scratchtown Brewing Company in Ord. After another successful visit to Grand Central Brewery, it was time to hit the last stop of the day for some much needed dinner at Casita Tacria. We quickly found outdoor seating and didn't have to wait long for our orders to arrive. Both the Casita bowl and burrito were excellent and just what we needed to fuel our trek back to downtown St. Pete. What do you think? I like it. Thanks so much for joining us on our day in the Grand Central District. We hope you enjoyed exploring with us. If you're familiar with the area and have any favorite spots that we missed during our visit, make sure to share them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let us know. If you're interested in other St. Pete and Tampa Bay area content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Thanks for watching.